What's up, Tyler? Yeah. How are we doing? Dude, I'm doing so good. I'm having a blast here. Overland Expo. Yeah, so I, I stalked him. I grabbed him and I was like, I gotta show your truck. His, his YouTube channel I watch a lot, so I know that this is an excellent truck to show what can be done to create an ultimate bug out view. Well, I appreciate that. That's a big compliment for sure. And that uh, that's definitely the goal, is to get away from big cities and society and all that, so that we can come back to places like this too and appreciate it. Yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah. But yeah, my vehicle is really built to be at least one to two weeks off the grid. Could you go more? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Water is the biggest thing, so I have a 21 gallon water tank. My truck, I wanted to build it to be fun to drive. Mm -hmm. That's why I built the Jeep. I had a camper with the Beautiful tires. Yeah. Thank you. you. Yeah, 40 inch Nitto tires, they're big, but uh, it's just kind of been the evolution of the build in a way. If you follow my channel at all on YouTube. His channel is? Down to Mob. Right there. Go yeah. check that out. Thank you. Um, yeah, you've, you've known I broke the front axle. and So we have Dana Spicer Ultimate 60s on here as well. I think a lot of bugging out is being prepared for any situation, which you can have the tools and the knowledge to fix things. Or like me, you can have support of you know, companies and, and solid parts to build it. And hopefully not break. But if we do break, we have satellite communication devices, you know, getting in touch with people. The somewhere device is, is the one I use specifically. And the fact that he has built all this from scratch, he has the knowledge if it breaks. I think there's something so valuable in I built that so I know how to fix it or I, I broke it and I fixed it so I know what's going on. And I know you've got that from watching your videos. You guys Thank fabricated you. this whole back in, put the tire in there. There's a lot of work. I think he's he's, he's capable of more than he says. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, I just try to stay humble. And you're all, always learning and always thinking of the best way to do things. And I've learned a lot with this build that maybe I'd do different. But overall, it's turned out just be better than I had if I had it. But yeah, as far as water, um, like I, I like to build in. I have a drain, so a fail safe in case all of, for some reason, all of my electrical. Even though, you know, on that subject, I have tons of solar and all that to keep me going. 370 watts, Zamp solar on the roof, 200 amp hour Dakota lithiums, and the Red Arc system, the Red Vision, all that. So I can rely on that a ton but even if I don't have that I have the drain in the water tank to get water just in case so you don't have to use an electric pump exactly yeah and I have the electric pump but so that's one the one thing exactly. that's what what I kind of get now. thank you <laughs> the, the, the R word yeah okay. redundancy right. well let's check this thing out man yeah let's move around it a little bit. do you want to get up you want to get yeah. in there Tom? yeah and I'll just come in behind you yeah So survival, as far as that subject goes in this camper. Um, oh, I couldn't do that with the pack. Oh yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> it's not compatible with my Yeah, pack. that wasn't a good start, at least for me. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're inside my camper and it really is all about having everything you need to be comfortable um, and survive. Uh, it's three and a half inch thick composite, so it's very well insulated. I do have a heater coming soon. It's summer right now, so it's not a high on the priority list, but very well insulated. Um, one thing with this camper is it's, it basically transforms from what you see now in the table that flips out and spins all around 360, um, folds in. Terry from Whipsaw Woodworks in Chino Valley just helped me out with this. And it also slides. So it just like goes everywhere. Yeah. So having just enough space to be able to survive like winter conditions is a big thing. I don't do that. I don't seek that out necessarily all year or all winter, but I love getting socked in the snow and that changes things a lot and you're in here a lot more. What kind of heater are you using? So I don't have a heater in right now. What I really want to do, and it's a it's a pricey system, so that's one that's the reason I don't have it right now. It's a, a heat exchanger system, so, so like with a, a gasoline heater, heater with a, yeah a hydronic type system. Um, so it'll have its own coolant running through, but it's very it's extremely small. Uh, 
on that note too that's a gasoline heater so i have a long range america 17 gallon fuel tank that's being installed the next couple weeks that'll increase my range to about 550 miles which is really neat um changes the game a lot as far as crossing long distances between cities completely off-road uh, but that heater would sip off of that tank and run 0.17 gallons an hour it's called the Rixons. If Rixons is listening or you know anyone, I really, really want to run that one. system. <laughs> but it's like four grand. Uh, but anyways, everything in due time. So this really building the truck the last two and a half years has been all priorities, you know, one thing after the other. Um, but I'm excited to get a good heater. Point I wanted to make too with the, the conversion, you push this table down and this all makes into the bed and you can live comfortably in this camper with the roof down so in a snowstorm that's really really gnarly or really gnarly wind the canvas does wet really well in the gnarly wind um, and it is have thin slate material and sunbrella here um, so bison builds these campers really well insulated it's the best fabric that i've seen personally and so anyways we can run it like that but also we can have the top down and really hunker down if, if there's some crazy storm or, or something like that. So yeah, we've got 21 gallons of water. We've got overall uh, 17. That? So that's in the back seat of the Jeep. Okay. I'll show you that too. And we kept all the systems in the Jeep for to keep things low. You know, that's a few hundred pounds in water. So that's sitting on the floor of the Jeep and we'll just have a line coming through to the sink. So that's the main thing we have to do from here on out is the sink and stove, Dometic. Uh, two burner stove and, and sinks gonna fold down from the wall so so excited about this and you can see it now yeah right yeah <laughs> and we're gonna have it fold down because we need to get it out of the way of the bed that's outstanding man should we check it check out the cab yeah let me show you the systems uh that allow me to really like live off grid for extended periods and i do love to be out for at least one to two weeks really get that feeling that you are self-sustaining and you just you feel it's empowering i think is the best way to put it um and then coming back and being socializing with people at events and things is just that much better so yeah let me go let's go check out some of those systems in the truck that really power this whole camper and then yeah you kind of use the table to pivot around the vehicle or the camper, I should say. Kind of spins when you go out. Yeah. What up, Kevin's back? Yeah. Somebody's looking for you. Cool. So yeah, we'll spin around. Back. So yeah, the camper, the big windows are awesome. The turn overland windows, uh, love that. And the doors, the Wildlands door by then as well. But uh, yeah, I love having the top pops. Get a lot of space, but you can have that down as well. And cargo hatch here. One thing is toilet too. We do have an interior toilet option, the wrap on dry, built this frame and um, that's important. Or how does that work? So it's a continuous bag system. So it uses about 50, it, about 50 to 55 uses you get out of these bags. And basically it heat seals the bags, drops it and you just throw it away. So it, it's pretty cool and you can just come to the cargo hatch and throw it away. So. Ideally, I'm going to be using the outdoors and nature and digging a good size hole and but that's for good emergencies Especially if we are hunkered down for long periods of time and things um, This is the Dometic fridge. Oh, of course, I live out of the truck. So I've got stuff everywhere beer from last night here um, <laughs> One second, just this. Okay that's your spike can right <laughs> um so yeah the dometic uh, cfx 45 i put a little magnet so it holds it which is sweet don't want to leave that open too long of course but uh oh yeah we got some lemon cakes for later Julie loves these so i'm gonna chance. give her it yeah i might give her these after that'd that be magnet? great that's a weird question but man i like stuff like that dude so this is a hack this is cool yeah this is actually ronin factory a gun magnet for like a, a slide oh, nice. yeah and then this is just a random piece of metal that i 3m to there it's real low profile though but yeah, yeah it works smart. really well and it just yeah i like that a lot but macgyver would approve yes <laughs> but uh invictus off-road we've got a molly roof kind of system going on that i need to get some more 
storage in. This is secondary storage. It's not finalized yet. Um, but I love that, having that. And then the Goose Gear seat delete, I've got Red Arc. Uh, so it's basically just a panel that gives you access to storage. Yeah, the seat delete. The seat delete. I've I've taken a, this panel off on I'm this side. I gotta ask dummy questions. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Goose Gear deletes your seat and then it's this system that bolts to the seat mount, super solid. I built this 8020 extrusion mount for the Red Arc. Julie left me a little heart thing there. That's our, we've been doing that on our rigs, it'd be cute. Anyways, don't get too sappy, right? Um, Dakota Lithium, 100 amp hour. I have two of these, so they're in the same spot. And again, they're on the floor. I wanted everything as low as possible as far as weight, even though these are super lightweight lithium batteries. And these can endure negative 40 to like 120. There's, unlike some it? lithium batteries, these can run in any condition. So, How are you powering? You have on top of so 370 watts of uh, the Zamp Obsidian panels. So they're really lightweight and they're super efficient. They work really well in low light. Um, and if we're in the shop is really the main, the only scenario if we're getting work done in the shop, we've got the uh, 110 shore power. And that's all part of the Red Arc system, which is neat. And then it also is the battery isolator. So when the truck's running, it charges off the alternator. So if they just Googled Red Arc, they'd be able to build a system like this? Yeah, Red Arc, um, Red Arc Electronics. Check them out on uh, Instagram. And uh, yeah, they're out of uh, Australia though. Really, really quality systems that really just make life easy. Have everything labeled, you can kind of plug and play. and. Um, we've got all the wires passing through here to the camper, which is pretty neat. That was a big, big part of it. And then the long range tank, everything fills, you know, from this same one fuel fill, which is neat. The front end, the recovery stuff, that'd be good, right? So yeah. my rig has been built for me to use solo if I'm solo on the road. I'm dating my girlfriend Julie and she lives on the road as well in her rig. So we kind of built both of them and using them together is awesome. But um, yeah, we have to be able to use each one with just one person as far as getting things on and off the rack, anything like that. So as far as recovery, I've got the worn uh, Xeon 12 winch and the worn bumper. Nests in there really nice because the worn made the bumper. So that just makes sense. Factor 55, the ultra hook, really good for if you're in a river scenario and you just need to hook something quick. But ideally you got plenty of time, closed loop system. I'll tighten that up a bit. But anyways, recoveries are big. So I could get stuck solo and have the winch, be able to obviously recover off trees easily like that. I also I'll carry a dead man off road though, so I can bury that in sand, snow. Haven't had to do that yet, but even wrapping around trees and rocks with that is neat. So I think about that a lot if I get stuck and I'm by myself and how to recover. So I do a lot of, I did a lot of mountaineering and I know dead man is you just bury something. Can you explain a little bit what that is? Yeah, so the dead man off road is a product that it's essentially a tarp with um, very, very high capacity straps coming off each corner. And so you bury that and there's a certain level, you know, you need to get it deep enough. And then you have four connection points coming up to the ground and you link to all of those four. If you have the vehicle really close, you can actually pull it right out of the ground. So you have to have some distance on that and it'll actually, the trajectory and all that, how that works, I don't really know the science behind it, but you can be a very strong anchor point to pull the vehicle out. So it's really neat. It's good for wrapping around a tree, even though you don't need it. It's a nice big blanket essentially, and then a rock. Um, big rock, you could, you could, they're so durable. You can throw them on the ground and work on your rig. And Anyways, those guys are here, they're super cool, and I just love all the community, the people that build these innovative products that allow us to, yeah, self-sustain off-grid and live on the road. And I do work YouTube full-time, um, so I'm always editing videos, and I've got the WeBoost Signal Booster, helps out with, you know, getting the signal and uploading photos. Love the WeBoost, and uh, working on different internet options, I'm in between. 
so right now. Like but yeah. Um, I've got a hot spot, a rugged, net gear rugged hot spot right now through this kind of weird service that is kind of sketchy. And I'm maybe gonna get a different. It doesn't always work, so. But I've heard of Starlink. I kind of want that. But anyways, yeah, staying connected is important to me. Uh, again, I mentioned re earlier the somewhere device. It's actually the blue thing right there on my dash. Um, that connects to your phone and that's a GPS device as well as a tracker. It actually links to Onyx Off-Road, which is neat too. And we use Onyx a lot. Julie does trail mapping for Onyx. Hey, babe. Hi. She's got the hat on. And uh, all right, get them stickers. But yeah, the um, somewhere hotspot, or sorry, the satellite device is nice to use your phone and have those kind of link in unison. So yeah, staying connected, having everything you need. I mean. One, that's one reason I built this truck, something newer, a little more low miles, because I have broke down in Alaska that's no good. and been towed to a small town where we stayed for a week in a junkyard. And I've had a f wheel fly off at the Dempster Highway going to the Arctic Ocean. And had to figure out all sorts of weird things. And, and now I have these guys in the background <laughs> trying to distract me. They don't think they'll get the camera pointed at them. Look out! <laughs> We're having too much fun here. <laughs> Sweet. Well, thank you guys for watching. Pleasure showing you my rig. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the Survivopedia channel. And uh, of course, comment, like, let us know what you think of everything. I know, you, you know, if you're watching this, I have a feeling that you're down to survive. But the question is, are you down to mob? <laughs> <laughs>